Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted episode. Oh, the brain's going here. 365. <laughs> well, you know, three digit numbers in my age, yeah, not going to work. I'm Kevin Carlson. I'm Gavin Ashenden. It's a very memorable day in the tax year. It's the 31st of January, 2018. Ah, oh, business taxes. Oh, it's all over. All right, let, let's just cancel now. Okay, we get to open up the show with a little bit of breaking news, but first, how's, how's everything going over there in England for yourself? Oh, I, it's fine, thank you. I, I spent the, the last two days in London talking to a wonderful organization called Family Voice Australia. Mm -hmm. They've come over to do some filming. Um, I think they filmed Michael, Bishop Michael Nazir Ali, uh, Andrea Minchella Williams of the Christian Legal Center, uh, and me. They're taking some material back to Australia to help them in their understanding of the the way in which culture is changing and moving against Christians, particularly about marriage and sexuality. So I had a, I had a, it's, it's, it's very nice to get out to London. It was a lovely day. I enjoy riding around London on Boris bicycles. Yes. <laughs> and, and I, I whistle and I sing as I go, and it's quite a treat for me to go to go down there. You didn't, you didn't take the motorcycle out, huh? I, I would do, but it's it's still very cold. The weather can change. Go down to to. to uh, to, to, to zero and then your hands and your feet really do feel it so the motorcycle will come into its own um, in april i think okay well let's move on to yeah it does over in london because <laughs> in london you, you get these breeze uh, off the you're a little island I, I don't know if you know this but england is, a, is is an isle and some of the wind is taken right off the ocean there and i've been on, on the coast there when you get that really cold wind and it's crisp but it goes right through you um, you and I, have we don't think we don't we don't think of ourselves as an island. There was a wonderful headline in uh, in one of the pe the, the newspapers uh, ninety years ago when there was some fog, and it was continent cut off by fog. <laughs> poor, poor continent <laughs> cut off from the center of civilization by fog. So uh, we are an island, but but it's taking a, a while to, uh, to to get a sense of our proper place in the world still. <laughs> <laughs> uh, understood. That's that's actually really good. All right, you and I have talked um, this uh, George Bell, Bishop George Bell issue to death the last uh, maybe three or four weeks um, because you and I kind of feel it's an injustice when there's just not enough evidence to convict somebody uh, that his name gets defamed. Uh, he's dead. He's not uh, anywhere around to defend himself. And so it's with a little bit of surprise that there's breaking news right now from the Bishop of Durham. I'm going to read it to you. And you and I can talk a little bit about it because this breaking news uh, precedes an event tomorrow that you and I will talk a little bit about. Um, Bishop of Durham, breaking. The Church of England... Ooh, let me... Oh, I may need to change the prescription of my glasses. There we go. Blew it up for you. The Church of England's National Safeguarding Team... There's a team has received fresh information concerning Bishop George Bell. Sussex police have been informed and we will work collaboratively sorry, with them. <laughs> this new information was received following the publication of the Carlisle Review and is now being considered through the core group and in accordance with Lord Carlisle's recommendations. The core group is now in the process of commissioning an independent investigation in respect with these latest developments. As this is a confidential matter, this is all we're going to tell you, uh, we will not be able to say anything more uh, until the inquiries have been concluded. That's the, the announcement right now coming from uh, Paul Butler, Bishop of Durham. Tomorrow there was going to be an event. Let's talk a little bit about the event and how this uh, uh, kind of proceeds that. Tomorrow there was going to be an event led by Jules Gomez, uh, a uh, person within England at church house trying to defend uh, the honor and name of Bishop George Bell. Um, what was that about? Before before I say what is about, sure. let, let me just say that the the, the 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 issue here appears to be whether or not the timing of this announcement is miraculous. Yes. Or whether. Or <laughs> let's whether let's go with that. That's a good idea. Or, 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 or whether it's some kind of dirty tricks. Mm -hmm. So now we'll, we'll leave that hanging in the air because <laughs> people will have to make up their own minds about this. Um, if if uh, this news piece of evidence um, ha has emerged for the first time since George Bell's death and the Lord Carlyle's report, 
the day before this conference con co this uh, conference well it, it's frankly the odds are astronomical uh, can it be dirty tricks would the church of england stoop to dirty tricks in these circumstances uh, it, it would be hard to believe that it might however dr jules gomez is a uh, is indeed one of the leading speakers uh, he's been asked to address uh, this conference by the supporters of George Bell who've got together. They've hired Church House because the Church of England can't veto Church House. It's it's owned by a different corporation. Mm -hmm. Though I have to say that two women bishops have written in to complain about Dr. Gomez uh, uh, to say they consider him to be disreputable. Uh, and they've written into the organizers asking them to ban him from speaking. Well, give, give us a, a quick bio. Why do they believe that he um, he was or now he didn't get kicked out. He left the Church of England like yourself. Um, the story of Jules Gomez is very interesting. I, I got to know him when I discovered he was in trouble. Uh, I was on an island in Jersey and he was on another island called the Isle of Man. And they're very similar in the way they set up. Um, and Jules Gomez um, had gone to the island having had um, quite a, 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 a glittering, uh, career is the wrong word, um, a period of service as as a priest he had he has a phd from cambridge he had been a, a canon theologian at liverpool cathedral when justin welby was dean uh he's 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 been highly respected uh and, and never put a foot wrong uh, and when he got on the isle of man uh he he grew his church exponentially he was one of the very few priests who was against abortion publicly and said so took a moral stand uh and there came a point where um, things went wrong between him and the bishop and he accused the bishop of bullying him uh, and he's and things was in in his account things were so bad that uh, he took a petition to the island's parliament which anyone on the isle of man is entitled to do if they want to hold somebody in public office accountable for misbehavior mm -hmm. so he took a petition to the island's parliament to hold the bishop of soda man accountable for bullying uh, and it was due to be heard but there's a condition. Uh, if you want to bring a petition like that, one of the conditions is you cannot have any disciplinary action outstanding against you. And surprise, surprise, just before it was heard, you won't believe the co This is just another of these strange coincidences, Kevin, which you'll find it hard to believe. Uh, a miracle or, 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 or smokes and mirrors. But anyway, yeah, surprise, like surprise. That, yeah. um, uh, Dr. Gomez found himself uh, being accused of a series of misdemeanors and a clergy under the clergy disciplinary measure all that they included I, obviously we're going to be talking about adultery here aren't we well actually we're talking about putting in the word honorable oh, uh, into a curacy in cambridge he, yeah. he described it as the uh, as the on, on an honorary curacy i think and and um uh, he was accused of inflating his cv he was accused of of, of shouting at a church cleaner um uh, he, he says he didn't uh, and um, and he, he he defends himself against it. But he was he was so upset at being accused of these things, which he believed were entirely trumped up. I, I think they 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 brought up eight to ten accusations. He was found not guilty of all of them, I think, except shouting at the church cleaner, um, which he says he didn't do. Uh, anyway, he he said to the church, "This is you've just trumped these up to stop me holding the bishop accountable." If you insist on this, two things will happen. A, I, I'm not going to turn up to a kangaroo court. I see no need to defend myself against things that are blatantly untrue. And B, um, I'll leave the Church of England and my congregation will come with me because they believe me. So um, they did. They walked out of their church. They hired a hall across the road and they started a new Anglican church. The Church of England tried him in his absence. They found him very guilty. <laughs> very, uh, very guilty. <laughs> Very, very, they, very they, guilty. they have a habit of finding you guilty uh, with very little, little evidence over there in the Church of England. I have to say, Kevin, they found him extremely guilty, <laughs> and, and they had a number of penalties for losing his temper down the phone, though he says he didn't. Um, now, if, uh, if, he had, if he had slept with the cleaner, mm -hmm. uh, he would have been suspended for five years. But for losing his temper with him, they suspended him for ten years. Wow. So, so clearly it was a, you know, immensely serious. Um, well, Jules Gomez has protested his innocence ever since. Um, and at, uh, at any point when he's come into the public domain, the church digs up the accusations and, um, uh, and tries to blacken his character. So lo and behold, um, a few days ago, just before he was due to speak, the Christian press in this country miraculously 
got hold of the accusations against him and, and they repeated them all as if they were all true. They, they didn't say Jules Gomez um, uh, denies these and, and he's done his best to prove they didn't happen. Uh, on the day that they were reporting the Church Times, there was a paedophile also found guilty. He got five lines and the Church Times dedicated half a page to Jules Gomez for notionally being crossed with a cleaner, if he was. Anyway, the um, so after the two women bishops tried to get him uh, fired from speaking to the George Bell group, then the, the Dirty Cat Tricks campaign started again. Now, whether or not this new news announcement has anything to do with that, we won't know because it's confidential and they can't tell us. So we'll just have to wait and see whether it is, in fact, a matter of enormous importance uh, and it changes the whole uh, um, thrust of what's happened with George Bell uh, or whether it's an institution that still can't learn to play by the rules and do the decent and honest thing trying to cover its tracks. We wait with bated breath, Kevin. Well, let's talk quickly here. Now, your, your camera turned off. Uh, people, we're just having some technical issues today. I did not deliberately block uh, uh, Gavin from speaking on the show, so don't don't start any rumors. Um, but his microphone has not been uh, giving us any trouble yet. Yet, um, It says here the core group is now in the process of commissioning an independent investigation. So we're going to have another investigation? We are. And, and, and clearly nobody can say anything useful and, until it reports. So we're in a kind of moratorium phase once again. Well, we are. But the, the new thing I see in this uh, press uh, uh, breaking news thing from uh, Paul Butler, Bishop Butler, is that uh, this new information was received following the publication of the Carlyle Review and is now going to be considered through the core group in accordance with Lord Carlyle's recommendations. Do you remember what the recommendations were? Well, I do remember what some of them were. Mm -hmm. They were mainly that the core group should behave responsibly and competently, unlike last time. Uh, so the incompetence last time was that people didn't turn up to meetings, they weren't briefed properly, some people had information which they kept from other members of the core group, uh, and Lord Carlyle said, why don't you actually behave professionally and responsibly for once? Mm -hmm. um, so perhaps what, he, what they're saying is they plan to behave professionally and responsibly this time around. That would be very good. Yeah, and much know. to be respected. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's that. Um, can you do one thing we didn't try before? Can you just unplug the USB to your camera real quick and plug it back in? Uh, we're doing a working technical issue on the show. That's how good we are, or brave we are. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, and plug it back in. Let's see what happens. It's in. It's okay. In. It's in. Oh well, it was worth a try. All right. Uh, well, hang on, hang on. I, I, I can just now. I can press the button to reenact. Oh, there we go. Boom. All right. So we have you back online. Good. Um, so yeah, as you described with uh, Jules Gomez, this has happened before. It's also, uh, you know, almost just the modus operandi, how the Church of England operates when they come across um, evidence they can't uh, overcome. Uh, there was really no evidence uh, with uh, Gomez. It was just a, a person who didn't want to deal with him and I uh, thought the best way to do it was to take him to a, a kangaroo court, as it were. Kevin, one of the reasons why um, I got in touch with Jules was that, that uh, when I was on Jersey, there was another safeguarding report. There were two, actually, mm -hmm. the Corris report and the That's Steel that. report. And um, the Bishop of Winchester, uh, uh, in my judgment, behaved very poorly. Whether he was badly advised or whether it was his own fault, we don't know, because he set up a second report by a high court judge promising faithfully promising he would put all the facts in the public domain. When she reported, he suppressed it. Now, it was partly because we'd had the experience of a suppressed safeguarding report on Jersey that my interest was alerted to what was going on in the Isle of Man. And I have to say that of these three tribunals that I've had direct um, uh, the direct experience of, the Steele Report, the Jules Gomez Tribunal, and now George Bell, in every single one, the Church of England has behaved um, in a way that has left so much to be desired, and it's one of the reasons why um, this isn't this is this is not about sour grapes. It's not about uh, trying to disparage an organisation that I belong to for most of my life. 
uh, it's simply about uh, inviting people to use the same standards of truthfulness and integrity that they urge on other people. Um, and um, uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens, what this new piece of information for George Bell is. But I, 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 uh, you'll forgive me if my suspicions are aroused. Yes, I know. <laughs> I read this and I go, oh, good, we have something to talk about. Because, you know, <laughs> it was last week. I'm like, are, is there ever going to be good news out of the Church of England? Will there ever be a time that Gav and I could sit down and praise them for their efforts and answered prayer and miracles and bringing Jesus Christ back to the Isle of England? And so, uh, we're going to talk. Well, we, we know that there are some wonderful clergy Absolutely. and some wonderful congregations who are doing exactly that. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but it just so happens that the ones who are doing it best are, of course, the ones who uh, hold to a biblical theology of, of ethics which is exactly the theology that the house, house of bishops and general synod are undermining so there is there's wonderful news and god will work in any situation where we where we give him the remotest chance and he does um but but there's no doubt at all that by by going with the spirit of the age uh, and by uh, not uh, keeping faith with scripture the church as an institution is making it much more difficult for, for these people who are honorably serving Christ and his kingdom. The irony here is for the last 10 years, having the certificate letter of being deposed by the Episcopal Church is a feather in your cap. You've earned something. You know, it's recognition that you are actually doing something Christian. And you see this in these little, you know, enclaves uh, on and on again. But... It's been a full 20 minutes. We are, are not going to take advantage of our listeners. We're going to thank them. If they want to donate, I'm putting uh, Gavin's PayPal uh, address in the show notes. I'm putting Anglican TVs and George's. Because um, I have a trouble. You, you can't really donate to Anglican TV, and I can't really send it across the shores as easily as I'd like to. So if you would like to directly donate to GAF, and that would be more helpful for any upcoming trip cost. We'll be talking more about GAFCON in the next couple weeks. Uh, GAFCON 3 will be in Jerusalem in June, and we we'll look forward to being there if we can make it. I'm Kevin Carlson. I'm Gavin Ashenden. You've been listening to episode 341 of Anglican Unscripted. 41? Well, I don't know about I'm, that. What's that? Hang on. That's what I've got written down. Oh, 311. <laughs> 300 and squiggle one. 365. <laughs> what? Oh, yes. It's the 31st of the first. That's the 311. <laughs>